Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to episode 51 of the podcast. And today I'm having Jenadelle Wilcox on the show. She is a hobby quilter from Florida, and she wrote to me about a cool quilt as, t as you go technique that she knows how to do. It's called a three step quilt as you go. Uh, and we actually collaborated. I sent her some embroidered quilt blocks and I just said, show me what you can do. You know, I, I was really curious about this technique, but it's one of those things that I needed to see it uh, and, and kind of feel it and touch it and that kind of thing. Uh, so she stitched this together for me and sent it back and I'm so delighted with it. Uh, so we're going to be talking about this today and how this three-step zigzag quilt as you go technique works. I think that there's a lot of really good uses for this. You know, I have a quilt as you go technique that I've taught many, many times. Uh, it uses binding, it's pretty exacting. Um, it takes a little bit of time. You know, it gives you a really good result, but I am definitely looking at new methods that will put quilted blocks together a little bit more easily, a little bit faster. And I think this definitely fits the bill. So I was delighted to work with Jen Adele on this little collaboration. I love this little quilt. Uh, and then she has actually shared, she's typed up instructions for you to guide you through doing this. And you can find her instructions on how to do this quilt as you go technique, all written up with some really cute photos that she put together. Uh, and you can find that at leahday.com slash episode 51. And that's, yeah, episode written out in letters and then five one, so you can easily find it. I think I'll probably also do like maybe um, three step Q A Y G. <laughs> cool as you go is oftentimes we often use the acronym Q A Y G, which is such a weird acronym, but that's often uh, one that we use for that technique too. So uh, I will definitely make sure to link that up in the show notes so you can easily find it and check out this cool technique plus the extra little handy printout that Jenadelle made for you. So yeah, this was a really big deal. And this is our first podcast episode that we are doing that has video through the, uh, through the entire thing. So I managed to capture Dinadell talking. Uh, we'll see how it works out. It might not always line up perfectly. You know, the internet streaming uh, and trying to talk all at the same time doesn't always line up perfectly, but I think it's going to come out great. And I love that you're going to be able to see Jenna Dell talking uh, throughout the podcast. Uh, and that's another thing, just in case you're listening to the audio and not looking at the video, please know we also have video of all of the podcast episodes too. And you can come and find all of it, everything linked up at leahday.com slash podcast. Uh, and the video is good because you get to see what I'm stitching on today. I have pulled out my goddess embroidery again. This is a little uh, Mother Earth goddess, and I've been working and slowly stitching on this uh, kind of an interwoven purple and blue border. And I admit, I have not been making very much progress on this at all. In fact, actually none, because i uh, gotten a little bit addicted to video games <laughs> over the last few weeks. Now, I mean, in, in all fairness, I have been making a lot of progress on a lot of different things, and uh, I feel like I've been working really hard and getting a lot done, so I think maybe in the evenings I've been just needing some total brain veg out time. And uh, yeah, so I've been playing a lot of Zelda Breath of the Wild. That's on the Nintendo Switch. It's an awesome video game. If you're in the mood to get, you know, sucked into another world and kind of stuck there for the next six months, yeah, I highly recommend it. So that's really what our evenings have been like lately. Uh, and for Easter, we had basically just an all day video game session. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, just kind of fit the bill, bill just about perfectly. Uh, last year, we had a really big family day for Easter. And that didn't happen this year for a variety of reasons. Um, just some, some health stuff happened, uh, both with some family members and some friends of mine. And I can just say, um, very, very thankful. Every, everything's okay. Everything's all right. Um, but you know, it was a week of a, a lot of worry and a lot of stress. And so I really didn't need the extra stress of travel or the extra expense or any of that kind of stuff. So we just stayed home and, and had a good time being together. And I just felt really grateful for that. I really needed that quiet time more than anything else. And, and that was really good. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's been one of those weeks that 
you know, there for a few days, I was, I was feeling very, um, very tired, very exhausted. Um, you know, it's just, it's hard to be around people a lot. And, uh, and I just could not seem to find that block of time to be by myself this week. And I really need that. So I'm really looking forward to this week, <laughs> having plenty of time to myself. Uh, and just, you know, just it, it, you know, it's not anything more, more than just setting and, and getting some work done without any interruption. That's always helpful, but it's also just being able to set and stitch and kind of get into that flow state. That's what I needed too. And, you know, it was just, it was just on short supply this week, I think more than anything else. But that being said, I did get a lot done and it feels great. Uh, one big thing is our Prism Path Quilt Along, which started this Monday. And here is the new version of the quilt. Uh, so dad just bound this today. This is a black version, a dark version of Prism Path. And I love this quilt. So it is a super bright rainbow of colors with a black background and I'm going to flip it over. I put the heart medallion fabric that I designed for Island Batique uh, and I put that on the back. And we only have a few more packs of this fabric left. So if you want to pick some up, you know, definitely come and check it out in this shop. We also have the rainbow batik fabric too. And it's a collection of six fat quarters that gives you those exact bright, bright colors. Uh, that's just perfect. So this week we're starting this quilt along. Uh, it is the third quilt that we're making from the book, Explore Walking Foot Quilting with Leah Day. And yeah, we're gonna be quilting along with this for the next six weeks. So today was all about, or the post on Monday, I should say, was all about preparing your fabric, getting your fabrics ready. Uh, went into a lot of good detail with that, how to cut your strips. And I think there was a little bit of confusion that I saw on the Facebook group about uh, how to cut the strips out of the fat quarter. And there was a little bit of concern about the size of the fat quarter. So I clarified that, made sure that was really clear. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see really beautiful collection of Prism Path quilts. And you can find this first post at leahday.com slash Prism Path. I'm also working on something really exciting behind the scenes. And I'll just give you a little hint. Uh, I'm gonna be becoming a machine dealer. That's not really a hint, I just kind of gave it away, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, I, I've decided uh, to become a sewing machine dealer uh, and we're right now working out the details of that and, and figuring out um, kind of what that requires and adding that to the site. It's really exciting and a lot of that came out of going to the VDTA show. That was, the, uh, I should say, the SDTA show, the Sewing Machine Dealers Trade Association show last weekend. I met so many dealers and most of them were men and they were such a, a kind of a different business owner from the other quilt shop owners that I've met over the years and very unemotional. And I know that sounds weird, but I really like that about them. And, you know, and some of these guys are just like, well, I don't know how to sew, but I know how to sell a machine. And I mean, you know, there's, there's good sides and bad sides of that. Uh, but I look at it as, you know, I need a little bit more stability in my business. Yeah, becoming a machine dealer just feels really good to me. And uh, looking at just ways that I can really incorporate that in my education and teaching already, where, you know, I'm already doing a tutorial and showing you how to use the machine, you know, when we're piecing a quilt together. Uh, if I am also adding that sewing machine to my site, you know, not everybody's going to come and get it from me. They're going to, you know, obviously shop around and that kind of good stuff. That's perfectly fine. But if I can add, you know, an extra class to go along with that machine, things that other sites like Amazon are not going to do, well, then that's certainly helping me out. And it's certainly helping you out if you decide to buy that machine from me. So I'm kind of still wrapping my brain around this, but I'm really excited about that angle and certainly feeling like that's a better direction to be moving in. Um, one big, big thing, which feels super, super exciting and you know, it was really kind of shook up my week already. Um, I finished Mally the Maker. Yes, I finished my fiction novel. So just in case you have not been listening to the podcast, I have been working on a fiction novel called Mally the Maker. 
And the subtitle for the first book is The Queen in the Quilt. And it is all about a little girl who goes on an adventure inside a quilt. Yes, there, I just, I just did a little blurb for the book. Uh, and uh, she's searching for her grandmother who has been missing for six months. Where has Grandma gone? Uh, it was actually funny. My father-in-law wanted me to name it, you know, Grandma Gone Missing. <laughs> Which I was like, no, I don't think that's going to be the title. <laughs> so yeah, that feels excellent. I put myself in jail on Saturday and uh, went to a coffee shop, which I do not usually write in a coffee shop. Uh, but I really needed to finish it. I, w I had the last scene right there. I knew what needed to happen. I just needed to buckle down and put about three hours into it and not do anything else. And Josh gave me an excellent deadline. He said, okay, get it done by Easter. And if you don't get it done and have it printed out for me, then you can't do any remodels or renovations on the house. You can't do any construction projects, not even like changing a light. It, you know, and I really wanna change the lights in the laundry room. He said, you can't even do that for another whole year if you don't get it done by Easter. So yeah, you better believe I was finishing that book <laughs> on Saturday. And it's not like I, you know, I have any big renovations planned. It's just that I like the freedom to be able to change something up in the house if I want to. I am certainly the type of person where it's like, all right, that has driven me crazy long enough. We're going to make that change. So yeah, that feels really good. Printed it out. It's a huge stack of pages. Well, keep in mind, this is a manuscript. Uh, so it's double spaced and it's on eight and a half by 11, but even still, I can say that this is, this is 80,000 words. And in a lot of ways, it feels kind of crazy. Like, um, it feels like my first quilt and, uh, it feels better, thankfully than my first quilt. Cause my first quilt was a mess. I really didn't know what I was doing and kind of threw it together. And, uh, in the end I was super, super pleased with it, but it was kind of a mess. This first book, and I, and I should say, I have written other books. This is my first fiction book. Uh, this feels a crazy awesome. And it really does feel like, I don't know, a little bit of the, like the end of a sweet period in my life. Like I will never again write my first novel, you know, like that is over. Now it's, now it's on to the sequel <laughs> to the second book in the series. And uh, so, yeah, I printed it out for Josh. He is editing and going to go through it. He's line editing right now. Um, I'll go through it again too. And then I'm going to plug it into a basically kind of a robot reader. It's going to read it to me in a robot voice. That's okay. Uh, I don't have time to read it to myself and I don't have the skill of narration anyway. So I'm just going to go with that and have, have it read to me because I really process the best way through audio. So that's how I'm going to listen to it. And then I'll be able to catch if something's annoying me, if the character isn't acting consistently, something like that, then I'll be able to catch those kinds of things by listening to the audio, because that's what I do all the time. When I'm quilting and stuff, I'm always listening to an audio book and, and I'll be able to catch those little things that, you know, I might have missed when I was writing it. But really, it just feels really good. I feel like I've got, I've got a solid story there. It's really exciting what I've written. Of course, I have no idea if anyone's going to be interested in a quilt science fiction fantasy story about a little girl. I mean, <laughs> really, it's pretty, pretty niche, <laughs> pretty niche right there uh, topic. But uh, at the same time, I know this is the book that was in my heart and I needed to write. And, and, you know, more than likely other people have wanted something along these lines too, you know? Um, yeah, I, pretty much every book that I've written has been like that where, you know, with the walking foot book, it was, I want to dig into walking foot quilting. I want to learn more about it. And I want to see what this, how this works on real quilts, on bigger quilts too. And that's where that came from. You know, 365 is 365 free motion quilting designs was really can I even do this? Can I make 365 free motion quilting designs? And I answered the question by, you know, doing the work and then of course putting it all together and making the book. 
So I'm, I'm excited about it. I still don't know, you know, we're going to, it's going to be an editing process. It's certainly not going to be done tomorrow. Uh, and then, you know, cover art and all that good stuff. There's a lot of little details that come into a fiction novel that, um, you know, is very different from a nonfiction novel to, you know, one of my quilting tutorial books. So yeah, just going to kind of feel my way through it more than anything else. And that might be something that we do to quilt along together next year. We'll see. You know, I, I'm still thinking about that. And, and, you know, certainly the quilts, there, there are multiple quilts inside the book, but one in particular we might want to make together. Uh, and then also I do want to make a lot of hand stitching tutorials geared more towards children. You know, there's Mally, uh, the little girl in the book, she's 10 years old. And I, and, and the book is all about hand stitching. So I really want to have a lot of hand stitching resources to go along with it. So if someone wants to learn how to make a, a quilt by hand, they can. I, and that's really where a lot of people start. You know, if you don't have a sewing machine or you don't have access to a machine or don't even know how to use one, then hand stitching is the simplest way to get going. So I figure that's a good place to start, you know, to start with some videos and just share that kind of thing. Never shared it before, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. So I've got one more quilt to show you, and this is super exciting. This is the Rainbow Road slash Twisted Squares quilt. So please come and check out the show notes. You can find the tutorial for this quilt at leahday.com slash rainbow road. So you'll find a free quilt pattern you can download and print out to guide you through piecing the rainbow road quilt top. But the tutorial is actually a quilting tutorial. I show you how to quilt this rainbow, uh, sorry, twisted squares rainbow fabric, which is on the back of the quilt. So this is something I designed several months ago. I designed this for Spoonflower and uh, it came out of the tutorial when I was sharing, you know, how to do twisted squares as a free motion quilting design. I had the idea to, to make the fabric too. Well, it took eight months <laughs> for me to finally pull it together and finish the quilt. But I gotta say, in a matter of about three days, this has become my absolute favorite quilt. Uh, I printed the Twisted Squares design on Minky, so it's super soft and cushy. Uh, put wool batting in the middle so it's nice and warm. And then I quilted it just using the printed lines of the Twisted Squares design as a guide. And that made the quilting design kind of you know, it goes through to the opposite side. So you really get twisted squares on both sides of the quilt. I love this. I mean, it's a little hard to describe. You know, I, I pieced a quilt top, but that really wasn't the tutorial. The tutorial was quilting in reverse, quilting from the back of the quilt to have it come on the front. Uh, I'm still working through the particulars of how to describe it, but I love how it came out and I definitely want to do more of this. And the big thing that came out of this was, um, I made this many months ago. I had the Rainbow Road quilt made many months ago. Dad basted the layers together many months ago. The whole thing was folded up and in the crafty cottage for a while. And I sat on it and sat on it and sat on it. And it seems like I put everything else, all every other project in front of something that I really wanted to make and I really wanted to do. And I think March, you know, my, my, my word for the year is challenge. And I think March was all about identifying where I needed to work uh, going forward. And a big thing that I really need to work on is prioritizing projects and things that I really wanna do. Uh, I really wanna teach more of this type of thing. You know, it's, it is utilitarian quilting. It is making something that's gonna be a soft, cushy bed quilt. Um, and it's making something bright and beautiful and cheerful, which is exactly my beat. I mean, this is so completely me. <laughs> it's so funny because Josh is kind of the opposite. He likes really muted colors, really darker colors. Uh, he doesn't like brights at all. Uh, and he looked at it, he was like, I, you know, that's not my thing, but I see how cheerful it is and I see how happy it makes you. He's like, so go for it, you know, <laughs> rock it basically. So that was just one of those funny things about this quilt. And I gotta say, I'm 
34 years old and I feel like I've gotten a blankie, <laughs> like a, a clingy blankie that I can't let go of. I am literally dragging this thing around the house. Uh, I was upstairs writing and James got up early one morning. I said, can you go bring me the rainbow quilt? <laughs> and he went and got it for me. And I wrapped up at the kitchen table because it's just, it's that soft and cushy and comforting. I don't know. I mean, it just, it is bright and gorgeous on both sides. And I see a lot, like the strips that I pieced for Rainbow Road on the, uh, on the right side, a lot of those came from quilts that dad and I have made together over the last four years. So it's got a lot of um, really important memories to me too. So yeah, this was just an awesome, awesome project. And I cannot wait to share more projects like this, you know, things that I really want to make, things that I really want to use in my own home, uh, and more fabric. I'm definitely going to be designing more fabric for spoon flower and playing around with that because, you know, it's just one of those things. It's just so much easier to be able to print on demand, get as much as you want. It's eco-friendly, and I love the way it comes out on Minky. I think it just looks amazing. So yeah, please come and check out the tutorial on Rainbow Road. So it's at leahday.com slash Rainbow Road. You can find that quilt tutorial. I did share the quilting both on a home sewing machine and on my long arm. I ran out of time and quite frankly, quilting on the long arm is a lot faster. So I pinned it up on the Grace Cunique and was able to finish quilting it in a day or two could not have done that on my home machine. It is just a lot slower to push the quilt through the machine. Uh, and I'm learning a lot more about that now as I get more experience on the frame. And yep, a lot more videos on that coming soon too. So I hope that you enjoy hearing this little introduction and seeing a little bit of the behind the scenes of my business and what we have going on. I really hope that you'll come and check out the Prism Path Quilt Along and make this beautiful baby quilt with me. Uh, you know, we're gonna be uh, quilting along with this over the next six weeks. So if you've got a baby on the way this summer, then this is gonna be an awesome project for you to not just piece it, but also quilt it too. So come and check out Prism Path at leahday.com slash Prism Path. You can find everything linked up there along with the tools and materials and fabrics that you'll need to get started. And now here's the show with Jen Del Wilcox about three-step quilt as you go. Hello, my quilting friends. Leah Day here with Jen Del Wilcox. Welcome to the show, Jen Del. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Excellent. Now a little introduction. Jenna Dell is a hobby quilter currently living in Florida and she sent me an email about a really cool quilt as you go technique after a podcast where I was talking about wanting to try out new techniques and new methods for that and I was instantly curious and I wanted to know more. So we got to talking and I ended up sending her some of my embroidered quilt blocks and she connected them all together to make this super cute mini quilt. I love it. This came out so good. Uh, so she's going to be on the show today to talk about this technique. It uses yarn and couching. It's really cool. So let's get started just talking about the basics. Can you just describe how this technique works? Sure. You have your quilt blocks that are already quilted, ready to square up. And usually I uh, stitch around them and square them all up to the same size. You can do anywhere from four blocks to, you know, a whole quilt worth. Um, and then once they're all trimmed to size, you can uh, arrange them the way that you want and then start joining them together. So you use uh, the three-step zigzag on the sewing machine which if you're not familiar with that, it has, instead of just one stitch over and one stitch back, it has three little stitches for each over and back. So it holds it very securely. You just put your first two blocks together under the sewing machine. And I like to start on a little scrap. It just tends to uh, go eat more easily and not get hung up at the sides. Usually, I do it with a walking foot on, but I found on your little blocks, because the batting was thin, 
um, I just used my open toe embroidery foot, no, open toe applique foot, and uh, I reduced the pressure of the presser foot a little bit. There's a, a knob, a wheel on my sewing machine that I can do that, that truthfully I had never used before. But my walking foot was kind of acting strange, so I decided to try that applique foot. And you just hold them, hold the two blocks together, side by side, pressing them together. Sometimes if you have quilting gloves on, that helps you press them together. And just stitch the first two together with them butted up against each other. And then, without breaking the thread, the next two under, and then the next two, until you have the first two columns done. And then I leave those connected, because it makes it a lot easier to... Just keep the quilt together and then just move to the next two, joining onto that first one that you have already done. Yeah. So we'll do the purple and then the teal and then add the purple roll. Yeah, and um, please, everybody know that you can come and see a picture of this in the show notes if you're not watching the video. We are live in the video, so you can see us and you can see the quilt. So you actually, ch you chain it, and then you leave the chains together, and do you leave it together when you're doing the stitching across, too? Yes. Oh. Well, what happens is you do all the, the columns and then turn it 90 degrees and then do the rows. Right. Perfect. Okay. And then all that, the whole front side, and then flip it over. You can flip it over to the back. And at this point, I start using the yarn to couch. It's a three step, it uses a three step zigzag, and you do three steps of stitching on each of the rows. So when you flip it over, if you don't already have a little tag of, of, uh, scrap it uh, then grab one and start the yarn on that and that it's it's hard to hold the yarn straight but if you have it on a little scrap you can stitch on it a little bit and then get a little tension you lay the yarn over do the three step zigzag all the way down you don't want to pull the yarn too tight otherwise it puckers but you have to hold it tight enough that it stays in place and I found that that black yarn that I used, it was kind of slippery. Um, the, the yarn on the other side is fluffier, so it spreads out more. Mm -hmm. But if you have a yarn that's really giving you a lot of trouble, you can just run a little, a little glue stick along there and just gently glue that yarn down before you couch it, let it dry a little bit. It seemed to work. So I did um, the couching on all the back seams and then flipped it to the front and did the same thing with the other yarn on the front. Now sometimes you don't, you don't, and you don't, do not have to use yarn. You can just use thread. The first one I did, I did with a really pretty variegated thread that worked really nice for both sides. But then I thought, well, what if, what if I put yarn over it? <laughs> I think that a lot. What if I did this? And I really liked the way the yarn looked. So pretty much all the time I do them with yarn now. I really like it. Yeah, I spin too. So I'm kind of like, wow, I could use up some of my spun yarn. And right, that was that. very cool. It's really, it's really interesting and fun if, you have yarn that's like thick and thin, and um, I didn't have a lot of choices for yarn here. And you know, you can spend a lot of money on yarn, <laughs> but what the heck, right? Um, <laughs> I have found a really good place to get yarn though is at retail shops, yard yard sales and stuff. Because sometimes you get a whole bag for four dollars, and you know, even if you don't even use all of them, it's okay. Um, you can use other things. You can use ribbon. You can use, um, when I trim little bits of, of batik fabrics, you know, I have little skinny pieces. You can put that over. That's fun. So different different kinds of things. 
Yeah. Now, of course, there are a little bit of raw edges and, and a little bit of fraying. I imagine if you wash it, it'll probably fray even more. So what's your feeling about using this for a bed quilt? Um, when I, I originally learned this in a class, they said there's no problem. You can wash the quilt as much as you want. It's, it's really, to me, it's more for like a casual quilt, um, not, not your heirloom quilt. But it does allow you to quilt each block, which is very nice. You don't have a big thing to deal with. And then um, the joining together really is quite fast. I mean, it sounds like a lot of work, but it goes very fast. So it allows you to finish a quilt that maybe if you had pieced the whole thing and then you thought, oh, no, I got, I got to quilt it and it's big and I got to pin it and all that, and you don't have to. Plus, um, the one quilt that I did, I enjoyed doing a lot of handwork on it, and so I could just do one little block at a time and then join those pieces together. So... That was a quilt I did in the summer when my grandchildren were there, and I could just pick up and, you know, quilt a little block, and then the next one, and at the end of the summer, put them all together. So, then, when I was, can I tell them about the the little coaster now that I made you? Uh-huh, yeah, that would be great. I yeah. love that. It came out so good. <laughs> when, I love doing scrap quilts. It's my thing. But when I came to Florida, I, all I brought was kits, which is kind of crazy. Sort of like, scraps are like a kid with candy to me. And, you know, kits are more like meat and potatoes. But anyway, so when I talked to you about doing this podcast, I knew I needed to practice again because it had been, a, I don't know, a couple of years since I had done a big quilt of that. So... I went to the clothes store and bought some bags of scraps. <laughs> and in the bag of scraps, I'll show you, there were three 60-degree diamonds. Ooh. Lucky. That was a lucky find. Well, it was because then it led to, oh, my gosh, I could do I could do those. Yeah. Things. You know, the uh, baby blocks kind of things. Mm-hmm. And so I did this one, and I put Christmas fabrics on the back. I love that. So it that. makes kind of a fun little, um, like a little mug rug or coaster. But you could join them all together and have a whole quilt. Yeah. And quilt it any way you want. So then I made another one, and this one I quilted a little differently. I don't know how well you can see it. Yeah, but it's a it's I a hexagon it, pa pattern, like an echo hexagon. That's really cool. Yeah, so quilted each one individually, you know, and then I trimmed them um, to the same size. And I thought, wow, that could that could really be cool. I could do that that quilt without sewing all those inset seams. Yes, but yes. So a little description. For the people that are just listening to the podcast, this is 60-degree uh, diamonds connected together to create a hexagon, and she did right. this without piecing. It's with this quilt-as-you-go technique, and that's not, like, blowing my mind. Like, I'm, like, looking yeah. at making hexagon quilts as quilt-as-you-go. That would be so awesome. Right. right, because if you've sewn a hexagon quilt, you know you have all those. These seams are easy, but it, all these inset seams, you start and stop and start and stop. It's and, a chore. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, a little tip on this is if you do this straight seam first and then when you go to do this seam, I found it was better to start at the center. Oh. You know, or no, or start at the center and work out because otherwise it wanted to hang up on these little points. So okay. you go from the center out, but with one piece of yarn. Very okay, cool. Okay, and then I zigzagged around this one. And this one, I put a little yarn around the outside that I zigzagged around. And on yours, I I just, I 
I went all the way around with a zigzag, plain zigzag. And then I used the hemming stitch mm -hmm. on the machine, and it stitched onto the block, and then it came over and caught the yarn. It just makes a really pretty edge, I think, with the with the yarn on the edge. It really does, and it's so soft. And, you know, like, yeah. my son loves texture and stuff, and I'm planning on giving this yeah. to him to play with, and I know he'll love that. I mean, it, and it just yeah. has a good look to it, too. Uh, and I like the texture of both the yarn and that zigzag stitch. Uh, I know some people get so freaked out when their stitching is visible, when their thread contrasts with their whatever, whether it's the fabric or the yarn or whatever, but I think that looks really cool. Yeah. Now, yours was, the colors were so different. The, the purple and the teal with the red on the back. Yeah. <laughs> so I used purple thread on the front and black on the back. So that meant when I went to stitch the back with the back on top, then I had to switch my thread. Mm -hmm. I had to have black on top and purple in the bobbin. But if you just use a variegated thread that looks good on both sides, I don't have a lot of thread here. Uh, I just bought, brought a limited amount of thread with me to Florida. Um, there may have been something in my thread stash that I could have used, but I didn't have it here. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then, you know, changing it out, you know, too, that just makes me start thinking about the backing, like a little bit more attention to the backing uh, and thinking of that yarn that I'm using ahead of time, then you wouldn't have to do so many thread changes, you know? Right. But it, you know, it's not a really big thing. No. And um, I, I think both, I like both sides. I know. They, I think they look kind of great. A different character to them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the other thing you can do, um, which I did, I only tried it once, but because you're putting things together that you don't have to worry about seam allowances, I took two, I think probably 10 or 12 inch squares, quilted them, and then I cut it apart and flipped, them, flipped pieces over and made another block out of it and couched the black yarn over it so it looked like a stained glass. Block. Oh, nice. And another thing I did <laughs> one time is I quilted like two, and then I cut, I think it was a circle out, and flipped it over so it was like right in the middle. As long as you use a completely symmetrical piece that you cut out, you can flip it over. And then I just stitched around it with three steps and put yarn over it and so then the quilting it stops yeah. at that circle or square or whatever you've done and changes perfect and so you're you, quilting these on your home sewing machine or are you quilting these on a long arm which which do you prefer I quilted them on my sewing machine i have a long arm but i i do um you know it quilts on that mm -hmm. but in Florida, I don't have a long arm. I just have my little baby box. And um, I didn't want to go home with a whole bunch of quilts to quilt. There's enough at home left to quilt. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I've been trying to figure out ways to finish. I did a about a twin size quilt that I was able to easily break into three parts. I just did straight line quilting about an inch apart on the three parts and then I figured out a way to put them together that worked. So I'm thinking I'm going to do the mosaic blocks from your book um, and put those together with the three sets. Program. Yeah, I am very tempted. I have Minky on the back of my mosaic blocks, and yeah. I'm, I'm wanting to three-step zigzag that. <laughs> to be completely honest, yeah. right? It you'd want to try it out. Yeah, always it, it's a good idea to have some samples, even just your trimmings from your block, to try it out because you don't, you know, you can have two little half-inch pieces just to try the stitches. To make sure your tension is good and um but really the learning curve is pretty small 
Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it goes together pretty fast. Oh, I should say, too, the class that I took, the first class I took, is where I learned about you and your 365 days of free motion quilting, because that's what we used to oh. stitch our block. So who was the teacher so, for that class? It was in a quilt shop. Oh, okay. In, in um, Interlock in Michigan, northern Michigan. Um so that was kind of neat that I had never heard of you before, and that's how I learned about you. Oh, that's and, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys um, stitched out designs and learned some free motion quilting and then stitched them together and learned this technique, too. That sounds like an excellent class. It was. Right. It was, there was one other step. It was called Mended Hearts. And we, you applique the block, the heart on, and then free motion quilted the block and then you laid one block on top of the other and made a cut across both blocks. They were both right sides up and then joined the two together with that three step zigzag on like a curve or you could do straight, whatever. So they were, it was called mended hearts. It was a very cool quilt, but when I did the next one, I decided I didn't want to cut them. I just like the way they looked, you know, just plain. So, um, but that first one, I don't have a, I don't have, I gave it away. Yeah. But it was really soft, you know, that quilting stayed soft on it. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like you could, as long as you overlap the blocks that are quilted, you could cut it any shape. And as long as it's symmetrical, you can stitch them back together again. Right. Right. That's right. Perfect. You could you could stitch you could cut like two lines and make two kind of four patch, wonky four patch blocks. That would be fun too. Yeah, that there's uh, so many different things that I'm thinking of right now with this technique. It's so cool. I know. We'll yeah. To another. <laughs> so, um let's talk about you and how you got into quilting and your story and you know you're obviously you're sharing time between uh florida and you have another house somewhere else so just talk about your quilting journey and what you love to do about this okay um i started sewing when i was about eight years old and i wanted to make doll clothes for my barbies and i tried hand sewing them and of course I didn't know about back stitching and stuff, and they would kind of fall apart. My mom bought me a little old singer. It was in a wooden case, a curved wooden case, which I had it, but I don't. Uh, It only sewed straight, and I sewed with that. She she paid $10 for it. I sewed that until I was ready to graduate from high school. Wow. So for 10 years, I made my clothing. I made pillows. Um, We used to make wool clothing. You know, we wore wool skirts. We didn't wear pants to school. We had to wear skirts. And um, so I remember taking little pieces of wool and starting a quilt out of those. But I didn't, I don't think I made, I didn't. I got tired of it after a while, so I ended up making a big pillow, a big floor pillow out of it. Anyway, um, so then my mom bought me a Viking Husqvarna sewing machine, and um, I sewed on that until um, 15 years ago, and that was a long time. That but was a long time. <laughs> yeah had a family um we ended up adopting six children all together so there wasn't a lot of time to sew but when they all kind of got to the end of their schooling I started getting interested in quilting I picked up the Pons and Porter quilt book somewhere along the way that you know it's like it's like the basics oh it's just a wonderful book and I and my husband started printing me blocks off the internet. I had this whole stack of blocks. And he said, "Well, what are you going to do with them?" And 
so I decided to make a quilt out of it. Well, just this year, I finally quilted it. But anyway, 15 years ago, um, it was our 25th wedding anniversary. We dropped our kids off at practice for basketball. And we went to the sewing machine store, and he bought me a used Bernina. A nice, really nice. I'm still sewing on that. But in the meantime, I bought another Bernina, which I traded in for a long arm. And I bought three baby locks and that used quilting machine that I traded in on a HQ handy quilter. Um, that was a brand new Avante. Um, so I, I wonder sometimes if he's sorry that he bought me that for Nina. <laughs> <laughs> he got but you I, started, right? What it, what it led to. <laughs> <laughs> all of the new things like you don't you don't realize what you're missing until you get that new machine and then it's like oh there's all these features <laughs> yes and uh that that's a great machine i love it it's um i have it in a cabinet at home so i don't bring that i live in northern michigan frankfort michigan it's a small town um, we live six blocks from Lake Michigan. It's a beautiful little town, but it's winter there right now. This is our first winter in Florida. Mm -hmm. And it's still working. He works from home. So I have to have something to do. Um, I either worked all my life. We, we homeschooled for a number of years. Um, so I have to, I have to be busy. I can't just sit around reading books or whatever. So I'm pretty involved in quilting. I have like four groups at Frankfurt that I'm part of. And um, I've joined a couple of groups here in Florida. So it keeps me busy. Absolutely. It's I think that's wonderful. Yeah. So what is your favorite part of the quilting process? What is your favorite thing to do with all of it? Um, I don't know. I, I really like everything. I love piecing. I love, I love, I really love free motion quilting. It's hard. It's hard physically because of, I don't have a really huge sewing machine, but I really love doing that. Um, I love hand stitching. I love stitching with pearl cottons, you know, making, um, either embroidery designs or just, just stitching lines. That's very satisfying. It's very satisfying to me to be able to finish my own quilts. I, I started, before I had a long arm, I did send quilts out and it was nice to get them back all finished, but truly the price of postage these days I couldn't afford it I mean if I had to mail them and at that time there weren't a lot of local quilters now there's a lot you know there it would be pretty easy to find somebody to do it for me <clears throat> but it's very satisfying for me to do all of it I like I love using my long arm um I really love putting the binding on really <laughs> <laughs> Well, I usually do it on the machine, you know, so it goes pretty fast, but sometimes I hand stitch, but it's like all those little loose ends are all tidied up, and when you get done, it's all done, and it's, I don't know, it's just, I, I love, I love that part, so I like all of it. Yeah, that's I love, wonderful. I love, I love inventing new blocks. Um, I love learning about quilting. I watch quilting videos on the internet all the time, crafty classes, your videos, um, YouTube videos from other groups. I could spend my whole day doing that. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I look at my YouTube thing and it says, 113 videos. Oh, no. <laughs> you have a lot to catch up on. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you have, you know, just this perfect time of your life to enjoy learning about quilting and a lot of people to enjoy it with. That's wonderful. 
So this is the question I always ask everyone. Unfortunately, it's time to go. Um, but I always want to ask everybody this question. What are you most looking forward to? You know, you're in your life, in your quilting hobby. Uh, what are you most looking forward to in the next five years? Um, just pretty much doing more of the same. My mom uh, lived with us her last uh, four and a half years. And... She had macular degeneration, so she couldn't be well probably for about the last 10 years of her life, which would have been from when she was 79 or 78. She died when she was 88. So I'm thinking, i got to get a lot of quilting in just in case, you know. Mm. For when, if, if I can't see when I get older, i got to do a lot now. <sighs> <laughs> I completely understand what you're saying. My grandmother had the same thing, and she was painter. She liked to paint, and she also liked to sew, and the same thing happened. She had to give it up. And, yeah, it is something, you know, there is automation. You know, you can set up your quilts with your long arm with automation maybe, and, you know, then maybe your kids or your grandkids could be able to help you. But I hope you're able to continue quilting as long as you want to. Right, right. Thank you. And me too. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the show today, Jenny Jenadel. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. I appreciate it, and uh, it was fun. So that's it for this episode. If you'd like to find more episodes of the Hello, My Quilting Friends podcast, check it out at leahday.com slash podcast. We have a player that will play through all of the episodes shared so far, so you can binge listen for hours on end. Until next time, let's go quilts.